Hello. In this video, we are going to look at how to use a for i in range loop to traverse from the start to the end of the list and then from the end to the start. Note there are some other types of loops that you can do this quickly with. Regardless of how you do it, we really want to understand how to use a loop to traverse a list, that is, move through it, because that becomes really important as we look at more advanced algorithms. So if you've, if you've actually looked at strings um, and looked at using loops or strings, this is identical. So remember, if we have some list that we've declared, we want to identify two things. We want to identify the length, and we want to identify the indexes. So here we have a length of 4, and the indexes are 0 through 3. So that means I can set up a 4i in range loop that's going to go from 0, 4, 1. And then I can go print list at i. So what happens with this loop is, remember, is if we have i, and then our condition is going to be i is less than 4, so i is 0, true, so we run the loop, so we print list at 0, and then i is 1, does that pass the condition? Yep, so that's true, and then we print list at 1, 2, does that pass our condition? True, so we print list at 2, 3, does that pass our condition? Yes, we print list at 3. And then 4, does that pass our condition? No, so that fails. And then we exit our loop. So what we're doing is by setting up the 4i in range loop, we're using, we're using the i to access the different indexes in the loop. Now, remember when you set this up, it's count check change. So with Python, they have this shortcut where if if we're incrementing, it's going to check to see that your, your, your variable is less than your check. Now, hopefully a couple of you have identified it, something here that I've done that's poor, poor form. And what it is, is I've actually written down the length of the, the list myself. And that's really, that's really not a good idea. And the reason is this. I could go list.append, and I'm going to append a new number like 10. Actually, before we do that, let's just show that this works. There we go. So it prints out each element. But like I was saying, if I go list.append, I'm going to add a new element to this list. So I'm going to append a 10, which is going to put a 10 on the end. And notice I don't get that last element. Now, What's happening is that what's happening is that because I've, I've written in the length of my loop, I have to actually go and change that number manually, and now I get all the elements. So what's better here? Well, it's actually better simply to have it calculate the length of your list for you, and that means it doesn't mean what you change this length to; it's always going to work. So this is how you move through a, a, a list from start to end. Let's do from end to the start. So again, use a for each loop, so use a for i in range. But what we do is we start it off at the last index. So the last index is going to be the length of the list minus 1. Remember that, that the length of the list is 5, then the last index would be 4. And we want to go to negative 1. It's going to be inclusive, exclusive, and each step we're going to subtract 1 from our counter. So if I take this exact same table just to speed things up here, and we're going to print list at i. Because this is actually a minus 1, what Python does is it changes the inequality. So it's going to say i is less than 5. And so I'm just going to pause this and, and fix this table up. OK, sorry, little fix here. The condition is going to be as long as i is greater than 1, that's going to satisfy the loop. So we set our list to 4 initially, and then I append 1, so my list length is 5. So i is going to start at 4. Is 4 greater than negative 1? True. So I print list at 4. Then i goes to 3. True. Print list at 3. 2. True. Print list at 2. 1. True. Print list at 1. 0. True. Print list at 0 negative 1, fail, and we exit the loop. So let's just check to make sure this works. I'm going to add a couple 
space, just some space to kind of space it out. And sure enough, here's our list from start to end, and here's our list from end to start. So these two algorithms are really important. I will stress again that there are other ways or some more some specialized loops to work with lists. I really do encourage you to understand this one because if you want to make the move to Java, it's a really nice loop to understand. It makes the transition a little easier. Um, secondly, the thing about Python that can be a little bit funny, and just remember this, is that they've kind of set up this loop with some assumptions. So you have to actually remember that if you're decrementing this loop, it's going to check the inequality that i is greater than the value. And if you're incrementing in the loop, it's going to check that i is less than the value. Those are two just things that are set up. The, the inequality that is compared are preset. As always, if, any, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Good luck.